<laughs> oh, it's getting more lively every yeah. every week. That was fast paced. That yeah. was like a, a machine gun or something. Yeah, getting more excited every week we do this. Machine gun Kelly. Um, episode, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <easy> e- <laughs> episode twenty, big two o. Um, sugar versus sweeteners. This is a question we get a lot. Yeah. What is better? Yeah. What do you have in your um, coffee at the moment? I don't have anything. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a stage where I was using artificial sweeteners. Um, so I guess that's the big debate. It's like what's a bit of a trade-off. So we'll look at today the difference between sort of sugars and artificial sweeteners yep. or and also natural, natural sweeteners. Um, and, and we'll sort of weigh up which one's better. I'm sure everyone has a has a team that they sort of side with. That's the nature of society these days. What about you, Hal? What team are you on? Artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners. Yeah. And we won't um we probably won't dive into what team we're on yet. I want to hear the science before I make my decision. Yeah. Um, you know, um it's one of the most common questions people ask. Oh, um, you know, sugar's bad, but you know, I don't want these chemical sweeteners as well. Like, uh what can I have? What what's sweet that I can have, you know? Uh, well, hopefully we can break that down a bit further and you can understand and make your own decision. So why, what's, what's the reasoning behind artificial sweeteners? Why were they brought out in the first place? Seems like an obvious question, but just to cover it. Well, you know, the main reason it comes back to calories, right? You know, sugar has, is a source of calories. So for a long time, people have been searching for, uh, you know, a, um, a non-nutritive, non-nutritive, nutritive sweetener. You know, something with a lot less cal- calories. So they want the sweet kick, but without all the calories that come with it. Exactly. You know, you you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. They say, but well, <laughs> unless maybe you, you can, <laughs> <laughs> unless you use some artificial sweetener. So, um, you know, having having a, a bowl of ice cream, you're gonna get a, a whole bunch of of sugar in there. Um, lately, you know, we've seen some of these these um, treats come out with. Not so much sugar, but they still taste sweet. So, you know, what's causing the sweetness? Um, well, it's it's replacement sugars. It's sweetness. Yeah, and look, you see it pop up all across the supermarkets now. Pretty much every low-sugar food that you see, you sort of investigate in the ingredients and they are using some sort of artificial or natural sweetener. Um, and I guess it comes back to, it comes back to the, the debate. Like, as far as sweeteners, they, they've, they've always had this perception of being bad but in then in recent years the perception of or sugar has has copped an even worse sort of rap yeah so what what do we do we just give up having anything sweet in our diet completely yeah well you know it comes back to something um it's a psychological thing called the, the natural naturalistic fallacy you know uh, if things are if things are from nature people perceive them as better for you and you know um you know less processed and um you know ultimately healthier but you know whether this is true or not sometimes i guess the jury's still out and you know it applies to a lot of things a lot of people think whatever's natural must be better well, let's talk about like the sugar in fruit for yeah. example yeah well you know it, for example coke coca-cola mm-hmm. is vegan right it's it's just high fructose corn syrup you know? vegan friendly if they put yeah. that on the front it would probably open it up to a whole new market of three people yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, how will start drinking it then? Being the, a vegan, the, the student vegan diet, diet, you know, migorang and coke, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, not necessarily mean it's it's a good diet to be on, right? So yeah, look, ju- it's the same thing. It, just because it says vegan on the front doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Yeah, um, yeah. So let's break it down. I guess you know, first we'll talk about sugar, what sugar is, and then I guess we'll talk about what sweeteners are. Sweet. So, oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> sweet, sweet <laughs> as. Do you like how I did that? Sweet as, bro. <laughs> it is going to be a very sweet podcast. Hal, you're looking very sweet today. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm, that <laughs> awkward silence <laughs> there. Don't know about that. Oh, no. <laughs> looking a bit oh. salty too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're the salty one. <laughs> uh, salty New Zealander. Uh, yeah. That's what New Zealanders are calling Australians a lot lately. Salty. That's the new New Zealand word. The New, Z- new Zealand word is sweet as, bro. Sweet as, but they call it. They call Australians salty. Yeah. Don't be salty. Don't oh. be a salt, is it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. So well, I guess carry on. You know the f- the main sugar that we should kind of focus on. When people talk about sugar, really, what they mean is sucrose. Mm-hmm. You know, table sugar. But that's not the main sugar that's used by your body, right? So the main sugar used by your body is glucose. So glucose is stored in the body as glycogen, and you know it's the principal energy fuel of our body. Mm, that's what basically our bodies turn food and everything we eat into right exactly unless of course you're on keto which is another story which we talked about already in detail but 
Um, you know, if glucose is too low, you're diabetic. If your glucose is too high, you're hypoglycemic. Oh, I can't win. Yeah. So, you know, it's a sweet spot of getting your, your glucose levels right. It is a sweet spot. Um, you know, gluco- glucose is so important that if you, don't, if you don't consume it, your body will make it. It's one of those things. Your body's amazing at yeah. making it. So you can make it from amino acids or from fatty acids. So, uh, yeah. Um, then another important sugar, which probably, in my opinion, is public enemy number one, is fructose. Mm-hmm. Right? So Why is it public enemy? Like, why, why is fructose cop a big rap? Because... Is there, there's fructose in fruit, right? Yeah. So like we said, you know, glucose, the primary function is energy production. The, the primary function of fructose is energy storage, right? Mm. So when you consume fructose, it's, its main purpose is to store energy. You know, like if you look at animals that eat a whole bunch of fruits, like bears and things, they tend to do this before they go into, into hibernation. So they're trying to store energy, right? Right. So, you know, this is where the origins of fructose came from. Um, it's it's more of a plant food than an animal food, right? Um, it's it's full of um, you know it's in all these fruits, but you know when you have fructose in fruit, it's usually accompanied by fiber, and it's not so not so much of a deal. But you know in modern times, fructose is found isolated from this in things like high fructose corn syrup, which people use as a sweetener, you know, as a sugar uh, as a sucrose replacement, right? So uh, you know it sounds nice and natural, you know, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, you know we've seen all these funky labels out there, evaporated cane juice. Is that what that is? Well, that's sucrose, you know? Right. It, think about it. Sugar comes from sugar cane. Evaporated cane juice sounds nice and natural, but literally it's sugar. Right. Yeah. It's tricky. So, yeah. So what sucrose is, is just a combination of glucose and fructose together. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's... So, uh, they, so they combining them together base, mainly for food additives? Um. Well, they don't combine it together. It's, it's combined together in nature. Right. Know? Okay. Right? Well, when you combine fructose, when you mix fructose and glucose together, that's high fructose corn syrup. When they combine together, um, you know, chemically, that's sucrose right. or table sugar. Got so it. usually when people talk about sugar, they talk about sucrose. Um, so, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not the added sugar that you know it's in a lot of foods. You know, people can pick up on sugar, you know, quite easily that, you know, uh, if you're having a dessert, obviously this is going to be high in sugar. But... Where, where sugar finds its way into a lot of people's diet is, is, you know, what they call hidden sugars, you know, in things like, like pretzels, for example, you know, like there's no, it, there's no reason for pretzel to be full of sugar. It's a savory food, but um, it has quite a lot of uh, benefits in food production. Mm. So um, I'll give you an example, you know, like a loaf of bread. If, lo- if you buy a loaf of bread from the bakery, how long does it last? A day, if that. A day or two, right? Yeah. If you buy a loaf of bread from the supermarket, how long does it last? You've got at least a week. Probably two. Not probably. Really? Well, maybe not in summer, but. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it lasts a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm a bakery guy. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I'm buying bread, it's from a bakery. And is there less sugar in the bread from the bakery? Is that the point here? Significantly less sugar. Right? Okay. So, um, but does sugar like act as like a preservative or something in bread, or no, is that separate? A separate? Well, yes, yes and no. So what what sugar does is it doesn't boil off when you when you bake it. So bakeries tend to use a lot more like water and things like that, right? But water isn't exactly you know isn't going to make your food last for a long time. You think about you know getting rid of water makes food for, last for a lot longer because bacteria doesn't grow in it. Blah blah blah. So when you bake bread that's high in sugar, it doesn't boil off. So it, it acts as something called a humectant. It keeps the bread nice and soft. Mm. So, you know, if, if, um, wait, my nose is about to leak. Um, if you, um, if you throw a loaf of bread at Hal's head, uh, you know, a bakery loaf. Thanks. Um, it <laughs> it's a big head. You might need two loaves. Yeah. But if, uh-huh. if you throw, if you throw a, a loaf of bread from a baker, it's probably going to knock him out, right? Oh, a half, a, a, a cinnamon roll would knock yeah. uh, Hal out. You know, like, you know, you could, <laughs> you could pretty much use, use the old baguette as a, as a javelin after a couple of days, right? <laughs> Yeah, they go that hard. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, if you use... Um, Hal's like, where is this story going? <laughs> is this Why am I getting knocked out with bread? <laughs> is this well, something you two want to tell me? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're being nice to Hal, we'll throw bread from the supermarket because it's nice and soft. And it'll just if bounce. If you're not being nice to Hal, <laughs> don't throw bread <laughs> But uh, you see where I'm coming from, right? Yeah. So sugar, sugar's in a lot of foods that you might not necessarily think that it's in. It's in nearly everything. Like, if you really look at the label for everything... Anything that's processed or in a in a tub or in a in a jar and sugar's in everything. Yeah, exactly. To 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 varying um, degrees, but um, it's crazy how many things sugar is used in. Yeah. So um, you know, on average, 
in, in Australia, people consume something like 90 grams of sugar per day, right? And Crazy. that's like that's like 20, table, uh, 20 teaspoons of sugar. Is there like a like so, an average of where we should be limiting sugar to? Do we do we know that? I guess it's different for everyone, but it, it's different for everybody. And you know, um, twenty seems like a lot. Yeah, but yeah. but it's hidden sugars. Remember, I know. So um, yeah, it's finding your way into your diet from from all kinds of places, and you know. But you know, we've evolved to to like sweet things. Right, so you've got taste buds in your mouth that specifically detect sweetness. You know, it's one of your five main. I had mine removed for that reason. Yeah, that's why you're so salty. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you get Botox in my tongue to take out all sensation. Yeah, it comes free with a chemical castration. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, anytime anybody asks me if I want sugar in my tea or something, I'll be like, "Thanks, I'm sweet enough." Oh, (laughs) jeez, but (laughs) but, um, you know, um, it's an evolutionary thing, right? And, okay, think of babies, your kids, right? When you introduce them into savory foods, Mm -hmm. how many times do you think exposing them to to a savory food, like peas or something, did it take? How many attempts? I'm still trying, 11 years later. Yeah, exactly. So um, apparently it takes something like 13 attempts um, before they accept uh, a savory food. Is that right? 13. What about... No parent can endure that, I'll tell you. No. Second attempt, down. We're never showing the kid that food again. Yeah, we're still trying to get Hal onto savoury food, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah? like what? (laughs) Hal has his... You'll you'll find out. You'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) Hal has his crackers and hummus dip every day. Yeah. I've never seen a guy with a bigger tub of hummus. It's about this big. It's yeah. like a big paint can. I didn't even know they made hummus that big. No, he has to go like commercial grade. Yeah. Yeah. I finish off a kilo weekly, I'd say. Bizarre. Crazy. What about sweet foods? How many attempts oh. did you think it take? Oh, one. Yeah, one or two. Yeah. You know, um, if you if you put a sweet food in front of a baby, that y- y- just watching their reaction is, is, you know, there's plenty of little... Uh, little videos about it so in a past job when i was out uh, i won't say the location because it'll um, be detriment to that location i actually saw a baby in a in a baby in a pram Mm. with a bottle that was filled with (laughs) coca-cola and i'm talking baby baby what that kid was sucking down on that (laughs) coca-cola in the bottle so it was loving it it was like crack yeah sugar acts like like cocaine it's like that addictive in the body isn't it well you are you do get addicted to sugar so you know there is a dopamine response you know how we talked about on the neurotransmitter episode um sugar is addictive you know Mm. it gives you this pleasure this reward so um you know even they've done some experiments on mice where they've knocked out their taste buds and you know they still become addicted to sugar just because of this you know um this um, dopamine response that gives you this pleasure and reward Mm, it's pretty dangerous yep um but what but the the question i keep what you keep hearing is it comes back to like fruits right everyone 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 loves fruit it's good for you lots of vitamins mineral all all these micronutrients but some fruits are sort of loaded with with natural sugars yeah and and it's the question i get a lot like should i be avoiding fruit well no because you know fruit sugar in isolation versus sugar in a you know a complex unprocessed food like a fruit is different right so in a fruit you're getting you're getting fiber you're mm. getting uh, you're getting all these micronutrients you're getting all these other benefits not just the sugar itself and you know when you cone just f- sugar with fiber it actually uh, it actually slows how uh, slows the speed in which it's um, digested right and you know it's the speed of sugar is a very very important thing that a lot of people don't consider you know wh- one of the one of the worst things you can have is one of those sports drinks that are full of sugar yep you know, um, it's you know, name drop. No, no name drops here. <laughs> no, not name dropping any any aids um, <laughs> 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 on this podcast. But anyway, uh, um, so you know, w- w- when you um, when you drink it, you tend to ingest a lot in a short period of time, right? Yeah. So um, you know, it's not only a large quantity; you're also drinking it a lot faster. So what's happening is your concentration of sugar is going to be a lot higher, right? So it's going to cause this larger metabolic impact. You know, it's like Boom, here's all the sugar in your body. Mm. So, um, Is that why a lot of people are against juicing these days as opposed to just eating the fruit or even blending it in a smoothie? Like you can, you can juice, eat quite easily juice eight, nine apples and make a, an apple juice. Yeah. But then try and eat eight, nine apples, it's nearly impossible. Exactly. Because that's the fiber content, right? That's exactly. So, um, you know, you're getting all, if you're getting all this um, sugar outside of its you know, natural <coughs> content of you know, this matrix of a fruit, um, is, is when it's going to cause most of its negative effects. 
right? And it causes all kinds of impacts on your metabolism, which, you know, we won't really get into today. It's a bit, a bit boring scientific. Uh, so Exciting for you, though. Exciting for me. And I've actually got notes and notes on it, but uh, in <laughs> case you asked. <laughs> 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 well, lucky I didn't ask. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, the, the thing is, you know, most sports drinks these days aren't consumed by athletes. And, you know, you know, even things like trail mix. Most trail mix isn't consumed on a trail anymore. You know, it's in kids' lunchboxes. So mm. um, all these things that, you know, ha- might have a perception of health, like sports drinks. Um, when you talk about sports drinks, it's those sort of... Sugary, cu- salty... Uh, coloured... Rehydration drinks. Right. Um, full of natural... Uh, with artificial colours that, you know, people think it's good for you because, um, because these pro athletes are taking it, right? It's only good for hangover. <laughs> yeah, but you know what the what these sugary drinks do is re- re- replenish your glycogen, right? You know when you when you empty your glycogen, your um, um, you know when you do some exercise, you empty your glycogen tanks and you want to replenish it because you know the idea is, you know you want to keep performing for better. But what these drinks do is they replenish your, your liver glycogen more so than your muscle glycogen, right? Right. And you know, but really the purpose of replenishing your glycogen is, um, you know, so so you can perform longer, but. Typically, you know, if you if you perform for one or two hours or w- whatever, um, you know, you're, you're adapted to when you're training, you're not going to need to replenish your glycogen that rapidly. So, you know, even having food, t- normal food will replenish your glycogen by the, d- you know, by the next day when you when you really need to use it again. Mm. It's like the, the occasion of people going back to back in these, you know, intense exercises is, is really quite low. So, like I said, you know, most of these sugary drinks aren't really consumed by the athletes that really need it. So do we actually, do we need some sugar in our diets? You, you, I mean, if you're, if you're on a ketogenic diet, obviously you don't need any sugar. But, you know, typically, you know, sugar, like I mentioned, glucose is the main energy source in your body. So it does have some benefits. And, you know, if you're doing anaerobic activity, anything more than 10 seconds um, to say about two minutes, then, you know, you're going to need some form of good carbohydrates in your body. So good carbohydrates that are potentially low in the bad sugars yeah so you know uh, glucose is such an important fuel for your body but you can get it from carbs you can get it from amino acids or protein and you know you can even get it from fat in your body so um getting the right type of carbs is very important but getting this excess of of sugar in your body is 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 only going to affect you by you know this big metabolic impact by consuming a large amount in a short period of time so what are some good good types of carbs that people can eat that are low in sugars that will convert into a sort of a slower sustained glucose you know, th- think of minimal, minimally processed carbs, you know, like like rice, brown rice, um, quinoa, um, you know, oats, oats, all these kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so sh- sugar's bad, huh? Yeah, sugar's really bad. You really uh, scared <laughs> me off sugars. Yeah. Um, What's left for me to have now then? Um, well, I don't know. If <laughs> you're running low on sweet things, you might still want a sweet kick, right? And this is where, you know, the, the idea for artificial sweetness came from. Yep. So, um, birthday or something, dude. This is the second time you mentioned cake. Yeah, he likes okay. his cake yeah. these days. Yeah. It <laughs> anyway, um, but without getting into some of the science um, behind it, you know, um, a lot of the, a lot of the, the science on 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 sugar and sweetness comes from uh, industry influenced science, right? So, just you know, always take it with a caveat that um, you know some of the science may be influenced by. Uh, you know, it's dirty. It's Just dirty, say it. It's dirty science. It's from these bribed, yeah. bribed studies so by the sugar industry. Exactly. Can spirit put your little tinfoil hats on, everyone? Yeah. We're about to go deep. We're about to go deep. You know, ninety percent of the calories. In oh, look at <laughs> it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ninety percent of the calories in America come from something like ten companies. Yeah. Right. They control the entire food supply um, in America. Right. And you know, all these big food conglom- conglomerates. Um, are <laughs> You got that? <laughs> Am I all good? Conglomerates, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm low on sugar. <laughs> 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 um, you know, they're, they're producing all these, um, all, all these studies on sugar. And, you know, when people say a calorie is, a calorie is just a calorie, you know, um, it's because, you know, some of these studies from the past that they're funded saying, you know, if you give a mouse, uh, um, you know, 90% of its daily calories from sugar and, you know, 90% of its daily calories from fat, there's no difference in, in, in weight gain, right? Mm. But, you know, ultimately... Um, you know, obviously there's going to be no difference because your calories are the same. To gain weight, you need to be in a calorie surplus. So there's like, you know, there's no difference between sugar and fat. But, you know, the, there's, there's, there's deeper meanings behind some of these. You know, like sugar doesn't fill you up. You can, you can keep consuming sugar. Um, you know, there's always room for dessert. Let's put it that way. Mm. You know, <laughs> after a big meal, you can always have something sweet, right? And what, what sugar does is it actually um, affects some of your satiety hormones like leptin, right? Leptin signals um, 
signals um, fullness, right? So um, having too much sugar actually causes something called leptin resistance. So you you know when your body produces this leptin, you know we talked about in the, in the hormone episode, um, you're actually resistant to this hormone, and it, and it signals that you're not quite as full as you used to be. That's why you can sit there and eat a whole block of chocolate. Exactly. Or uh, a whole tub of ice cream. Mm. Yeah. So you know, sh- sugar sugar's the money of these uh, these uh, these um, bigger companies, and you know, it's why fat copped a bad rap years ago as well. The, it, these these big sugar industries were basically um, putting out or providing funds for all these these studies to to paint fat in a bad light. And you, we went through a period of seeing a whole heap of um, products in supermarkets with no fat or low fat, and um, and that was mainly be- influenced by a lot of these these studies. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, um, there's a New York Times article, which we'll link in the, in the show notes, but in the 1960s, it, it goes into some of the details that the skin in- industry paid some of these scientists to, to publish some of this dodgy, um, dodgy science. And, you know, at the end of the day, the sugar industry is really bigger and better than the nicotine industry. And, you know, nicotine is now pretty much not socially acceptable, well, a lot less than it was, you know, back in the day. Um, but, you know, sugar still is. You still got all these big sugar, mm-hmm. sugar houses, a.k.a. dessert houses that um, you know, pumping us with sugar. I would say sugar would contribute to more health problems across the world than what nicotine would. P- potentially, you know, mm. so bigger and better. Um, and, you know, uh, i got a personal... So there you go. Everyone, pick up a cigarette. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> put down the donut. Yeah, yeah put, put down the donut and put, pick up a cigarette. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, i got my personal vendetta against sugar. You know, uh, the British took the Indians to South Africa to be, uh, you know, work on the sugar fuel plantations. Wow, so some deep-seated sugar some deep issues. Some deep-seated sugar oh, hate. Yeah. You know, I got my biases like the sugar industry. It's just the opposite. <laughs> 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 Turns a sugar yeah. vigilante. Exactly. Anyway, on that note, so, uh, so the alternative. What is there? What else is there? If well, you can't I think, have sugar. I think the alternative came when um, when sugar started copying a bad rap. Um, diabetes, all these health concerns caused by, by all this added sugar in products. People were getting fatter and still are getting bigger and bigger generally consuming high sugar diets a lot of soft drinks and and products like that so there's got to be an alternative right well there it doesn't have to be but i think society demands that that they do have a sweet tooth and it's probably created by the sugar industry yeah um but there are some alternatives to keep calories down yeah and these are artificial and, s- and natural sweeteners. Exactly. So, you know, it's not just this, you know, this demand for sugar is not just created by the sugar industry. Uh, you know, it's, 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 an, evolution, it's an evolutionarily greedy programmed people. thing. people. You know, no, well, you know, we used, to, we used to eat sugary fruits and things back in the day. Um, and, you know, there's some, some links between, uh, you know, how we used to, um, our genetic code and, you know, how we used to um, search for fructose and things like that. So, you know, it's not just tasty desserts it's you know it's an evolutionary thing that we 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 love sweet stuff right right so um luckily you know there's two two types of sweetness um bulk sweetness and intense sweetness you know you've got these sugar alcohols um you know xylitol erythritol maltitol um these things typically aren't as sweet as sugar but tend to have a lot less calories right so your body tends to um um you know excrete them almost unchanged um, and then on the other hand, you've got something called intense sweetness, you know, things like sucralose, aspartame, stevia, um, you know, good things and bad things, you know, saccharin, all these, all these intense sweeters, which are like, you know, 200, 300 times sweeter than sugar. And what that means is you, you know, you only need a really, really tiny amount to give you a bit of sweetness. Mm-hmm. Right now where some of the, some of the fear of these, um, intense sweetness comes from is, you know, reading some of these studies, like you know, if you give a mouse this um you know say aspartame um and it it gives it cancer or something like that you know um most of these studies have been done with you know doses that are two to three thousand times more than you can you know physiologically handle but they've you know they've pumped these mice with these studies and you know people have taken this like oh sweetness cause cancer i know and you you think of it like like sugar right because you get table sugar is a thing you know when you grow up it was sort of always on the table and you you picture sort of digging in with a spoon and and um, and putting a whole teaspoon worth of sugar into a cup of tea or something and then when you think artificial sweeteners you actually sort of picture this the artificial sweetener in the same quantity as as normal like normal table sugars yeah. so it's not like uh, the equivalent to get the equivalent sweetness of like a spoonful of sugar 
maybe a minute amount of artificial sweetener. So you can't think of them as the same sort of one's just the same quantity as the other. Yeah, exactly. So and I think that's why a lot of people get scared off as well. Like the, this minute amount of artificial sweetener will produce the same sort of sweetness as... Yeah, as... as yeah, so you know, as sugar. So yeah. you know, there's there's two main concepts to take into concern when we w- when we talk about artificial sweetness. You know, one of them is the naturalistic fallacy, which we just talked about. You know, people tend to think things from nature are better, mm. but you know, this isn't always true. You know, there's a lot of drugs that come from nature. Um, you know, it's not like okay, cocaine's natural. You know, it comes from a plant leaf. Doesn't mean you want to sweeten your tea with cocaine. You'll like have a heart attack. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you, sweeten your weekend. Yeah. Not, you know, I'm not like kidding, 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 uh, kids. Don't know about that. But anyway. Um, uh, you know, lots of things are natural, you know, um, like, um, okay, we'll, we'll take aspirin, for example, you know, and aspirin is a nice painkiller, but it comes from white willow bark, right? It comes from the bark of a tree. But, you know, if you were to eat the bark of this tree, there's all this other stuff in there that's going to cause you all kinds of damage to your, to your body, right? But, you know, aspirin is one of the things that's found in there. So, you know, it's, you know, it's chemically synthesized in the lab now, but, you know, it's also found in nature. So, you know, what's the difference? Well, really, you know, it's, um, it, it's just how it's made. And that's what determines whether things are natural or artificial. You mm-hmm. know? Um, there's, there's no legal definition of what's, um, what's a natural and what's an artificial sweetener in, in this part of the world anyway. So, uh, what, is the, what are some of these artificial sweeteners made from? Like look at maybe probably sucralose is you're probably the most well-known and widely used sweetener. Yeah, so sucralose is about 200 times sweeter than sugar and it's actually made from sugar. Whoa, people, <laughs> people wouldn't even know that. When you think no. artificial sweetener and then you hear sucralose and people just automatically think that it's some chemical like rat sack or something, it's, yeah. it's actually made from sugar. And, you know, aspartame is actually made from two amino acids. So, oh, yeah? you know. Which ones? Um, phenylalanine and I think methionine. I forgot what the second one is. So, yep. um, But, yeah, it's basically made from two amino acids that give the sweetness. So, so where do they get this bad rap? Where did this come from? Well, the it, it's come from these these studies on mice, right? Yeah. So you know, uh, and and who funded these studies? Well, uh, oh, <laughs> it could be the big bad sugar industry. <laughs> but no, actually, uh, you know, to prove safety, um, it requires quite an extensive, um, you know, um, I guess you know, uh, body of evidence um, to provide the FDA, for example, in America, or or you know, for Zan's Food Safety Australia, New Zealand over here. So you know, uh, apparently, what I just read is out of everything. Um, out of every chemical approved by the FDA, aspartame has the most safety data on it. <laughs> so, so is like something like sugar and let's just say aspartame or one of the other um, um, artificial sweeteners, are they sort of governed by the same set of strict guidelines and rules? Are they analyzed and studied the same way? No. So, you know, you don't have to demonstrate safety for something like sugar because it's been around forever, you know. Like, what, like why, would, why would a company need to demonstrate that nowadays? You know, people have been having sugar for, for, for you know, centuries. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> people haven't been having artificial sweetness for centuries, you know. It's right, because it's a new thing. Exactly. It has to go through a whole heap of research and study and exactly. compliance. So, you know, artificial sweeteners actually have a lot more safety than some of the natural counterparts, you know, like stevia. Stevia comes from the leaf of a plant, mm-hmm. right? Um, and this one component of stevia is what provides the sweetness. It's called Robocide A. Right, so stevia has some studies on its safety, but you know, just because it's natural, it's perceived as safe, safer than something like sucralose or aspartame. But you know, that also might not necessarily be the case because you know we don't know enough about some of these uh, sweeteners. Um, you know, there's another sweetener which we use in our plant protein. It's called thalmatin. It comes from South African food ketemfe, right? And it's made from protein. So it's actually a protein that's sweet. Briar. Yeah, so uh, it's my favorite sweetener, Thalmatin. Thalmatin is a good sweet. It doesn't have that sh- um, shitty aftertaste that Stevia has as well. Exactly. And, um, you know, we don't use aspartame in any of our products because, you know, although it's safe, people don't like it. So, you know, we're not going to put something in there that people don't like. Um, we should, just in spite yeah. of that. Yeah. No, we're Listen not. to <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think we would. I, I think if, if any of our products contain that, not that it's unsafe, yeah. there's plenty of stuff, plenty of studies that say there is absolutely... No risk here to your health, also, but people don't want it. Yeah, it's, it's it's almost like once you're tarnished with that brush, it's it's hard to get rid of that stigma. Exactly, and then you know, um, you know, some, you know, having said that, there are some bad sweeteners out there. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the famous sweeteners back in the day was saccharin, right? Saccharin was used in um, this drink called Tab. I'm not sure if you've had it. Yeah. Well, you've been al- alive for a long time, so you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've definitely had it. But you know, I used to drink this as a kid. I had tab in my baby's bottle when <laughs> I was a baby. 
I've but, seen that in a Simpsons comic. Oh, wow. oh wow! <laughs> Hell actually hasn't had that, but yeah, it, it was a popular drink like in the '90s, I guess, and before that. But um, yeah, that was sweetened with saccharin, and you know that's why you don't see it around anymore because saccharin's been shown to be not the not the safest sweetener out there. What was it doing? Um, I think there was just some, side effects. Yeah, I think there's some cancer causing potential. So um, everything yeah. causes cancer these days. Yeah, but how you know, else do you die? <sighs> You could die from from obesity from sugar, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, diabetes, yeah. or Sh- shark attack, what? or someone throwing bread at your head. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not, not soft bread. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll wait for it to go off first. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna waste soft bread on your head. Cheers. Yeah, but I guess you know. In summary, not all sweeteners are the same, right? So yeah. um, you know, we shouldn't paint paint a um, paint a broad brush of, across all sweeteners and say you know sweeteners are bad, sugar is good. Natural's bad, uh, artificial's good. It's not necessarily the case, you know. Um, but yeah, sucralose, that's my favorite sweetener. Yeah, well, uh, obviously it's derived from sugar, so that would have to be probably classed as the the safest if, if you were to well, classify. Well, actually, you know, um, that n- might not necessarily even be true. You know, it's... it's, oh, well. it's, it's Why it's is it your favorite then? Well, it has the best sweetness, you know. It has, the be- uh, it has the best sweetness profile. What, most, so it's most like... like Equivalent to actual sugar. Yeah, and if you want to know the difference, that's the difference between Diet Coke and Coke Zero. You know, that's a Diet Coke sweetened with aspartame, Coke Zero sweetened with sucralose. Is that right? Yeah, so, um, well, and a sulfate potassium, which is another sweetener. Which if you drink about. Diet Coke as opposed to Coke Zero, well, not that I drink any of it, but you need to really question your life choices. Oh, <laughs> wow. If Coke Zero is so much better than Coke, Diet Coke. Yeah. Well, I, I thought you said you didn't drink it. Well, I don't, yeah. but, but <laughs> it, it from memory. Yeah, yeah. it tastes it tastes very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like so that's the theory. difference. A lot of people probably wouldn't even know that. Yeah, hard to promote that. N- very for, hard. For <laughs> coke, yeah. Poor old Coke. Yeah, and you know we've seen all these other um, you know sugar free versus zero sugar versus it's it's super confusing nowadays because it people, is people no are added just, sugar. People are using different artificial sweeteners and trying to communicate it without telling them that the difference between these products is the artificial sweetness. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, um, we'll touch on the safety again. And, you know, um, last year in 2019, there was a big meta analysis. And, you know, what we talked about meta analysis is the best kind of study that you can do, right? So um, it's a study of all these other studies. So um, some of the conclusions people who consume artificial sweeteners did not weigh more than those who didn't. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- weight out? Yep. Um, artificial sweeteners did not lead people to be hungrier or eat more. Okay. You know, so it didn't increase appetite? Yep. Versus sugar. You know, we talked about leptin and all those other society things. Um, artificial sweeteners did not elevate risk of various forms of cancer. Right? And myth busted. Sweeteners did not trick your body into gaining weight, cause you to eat more or cause cancer. Right? That's another myth. And, or I don't know if it's a myth or not, but a lot of people say that when you have an artificial sweetener, it can, some, it can trigger the same thing that sugar does in your body insulin response still occurs um, a lot of sweeteners don't even trigger um, an insulin spike and you know that that's that's a myth and uh, good um, you know <laughs> it, protein will trigger in, an insulin spike more than a lot of these artificial sweeteners yeah so um, you know it depends what you're sweetening um, but um, yeah so uh, uh, more or less artificial sweeteners are a lot are safe but remember some aren't right you know saccharin is still a bad bad thing um, Another thing is, you know, um, some research, uh, people say, you know, some research shows that artificial sweeteners are bad for your gut health. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so they actually did a study on this directly. So um, basically... Wouldn't actual sugar be worse yeah. for your gut health? Exactly. And, you know, we talked about that quite a lot and its effect on endotoxin and your mood and, um, you know, all these other, all these other negative effects. But, um, yeah, it was actually studied. So they gave three times the accept- acceptable intake of su- um, sucralose to... Uh, to mice, right? Um, and they gave it for eight weeks, which is equivalent to like six years of human studies. And, um, you know, they're given this artificial sweetener and r- results show that the existence of sugar-specific rather than non-specific sh- um, sugar pathways, meaning sugar and artificial sweeteners are not the same, blah, blah, blah. The gut brain excess occurs during ingestion of sugar and is why knockout mice exclusively drank from sugar solution. So, okay, bad example. I read the study wrong. But um, <laughs> basically they're saying... Um, you, sh- you probably shouldn't consume three times the amount of sucralose uh, for six years. But, um, yeah, you know, th- there may be some potential effects on, on your gut bacteria, but, you know. But that's the same as 
anything really. Yeah, not to the same extent. Too much alcohol, too much sugar, too much. So obviously in in smaller doses, you you don't want to consume too much of anything, whether it be sugars or artificial sweeteners. Yeah, and you know, the other other principle I want to talk about is, you know, the principle of toxicology, which is it's the dose that makes the poison. Yeah. Right? So um, with anything in the world, uh, toxicology, like, you know, toxicology is a study of how things negatively affect your body, right? Um, it's always about the dose. It's never about the toxin itself. Perfect example coming off a really hot weekend is the sun. Yeah. We all need sun. Yeah. And it's great for us. Vitamin D, perfect. Stay out there too long. You're burnt. You get skin cancer. Yeah. You it's, know. it's all about dose. Exactly. And, you know, the same thing could be said for water. You know, you need water to survive. But if you're drinking, you know, 50 liters of water per day, you're going to die. <laughs> hmm. You know, it's going to mess your body up. But, uh, you know, the same thing can be said about anything. So, you know, some of these studies on, on you know, sweeteners, look at a dose that's not, you know, physiologically possible. You know, you're not going to have your body weight in artificial sweeteners per day. It's no. just not possible. So, obviously, you know, looking at these and extrapolating these as, you know, proper health um, um, concerns might not necessarily be, be uh, valid, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's heaps of good examples of, uh, of this toxicology, you know, Botox, botulinum toxin right the, the the old injections right never heard of it this is one of the most to- <laughs> this is one of the most toxic things in in known to man right yet 20 year old women are out there just injecting that stuff into themselves every two to three months exactly without a thought in the world exactly and it, this has nanogram toxicity right so you know what a milligram is very very small a millionth of a milligram can potentially kill you so um you know this that al- that always makes me laugh yeah you know, when you see these young girls out there, and I'm picking on, I'm not saying any it's girls in particular. Girls too, oh, it is, it is yeah. definitely, but, and they're all sort of into their health and fitness, and and then they're just getting themselves pumped full of Botox yeah, and fillers, good. and all this stuff is so, like, you, you eat something bad in front of them, oh, I can't believe you're eating that. I'm like, yeah. your face is full of <laughs> the worst chemicals I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, you're killing yourself. Yeah. Like, where's you know, all that go? You're worried about artificial it sweetness, dissipates. but you've got artificial cheeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> artificial lips, artificial <laughs> cheeks. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, but you know, dose that makes the poison applies to everything. Applies to alcohol. Applies to any drug. Applies mm. to you know anything that's good and anything that's bad. Every every girl under twenty five just unsubscribed. Oh. Yeah, all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, that's it for me. Sugar well, versus sweetness. So what are you, what team are you on? I'm on team, uh, team selected sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are your three favorites? Um, Dalmatin, number one, sucralose, number two, uh, maybe aspartame, number three. Oh, <laughs> controversial. controversial. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with your first two and pull it up at two. Yeah. Yep, um, agreed. just because I'm not smart enough to understand the rest. Yeah, I trust you. And I'm, I'm all for... Whole foods anyway. Try to avoid sugars where possible. I do love my fruits. Yeah, you know, but I do sh- limit sugar, them. Sugar in in a in a whole food matrix is is still good. You know, yep. in in a fruit in you know unprocessed food, this you know sugar sugar's good when it's found in that form. It's just when you're having it in all these other yeah isolated sugars. And look, we're we're part of that society. We like to we like to treat ourselves occasionally. So when we do, you, you can either go for the fully fledged. Sh- sugar, or you can go for the sugar substitute. And for me, I think trade off as far as as b- body weight and, yeah. and energy and things like that, I think I'll probably I would probably choose a, a sugar substitute, a safe one. Yeah, mm. and you know, th- th- is you know, if you're eating less processed food, typically you're going to be eating less sugar. Yeah, of course. Right, and you know, there is a trade-off with eating less processed food. You know, it's going to cost you more, and it's going to cost you more time. Mm. You know, that's that's the only thing. You know, the more processed food is quicker and it's cheaper, and you know, that's kind of part of the reason why, you know, low lower socioeconomic. Um, Brackets tend to have higher rates of obesity and, you know, these related illnesses is because, you know, the food is cheaper and the food is easier to prepare. Mm. So, you know, it's it's a bigger society issue that, um, you know. Ob- obviously, it. Coca-Cola is cheaper than baby formula. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a glass of Coke's a lot cheaper than, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a nice nice mango. So <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, well, I think we've covered that. Mm-hmm. If, I'd, be, I'd be interested, actually, to hear everyone's thoughts on this. So whether you see this on Instagram, Facebook, or um, on YouTube, yeah, write, write it in your comments what team you're on. Yeah. 
and um, um, and let us know your thoughts. I just want to I just want to really understand sort of where people's heads are at these days. We might be stuck in the past. I know Darren's not; he's up to date with all the latest science. But but yeah, no, nah, definitely welcome the haters. You know, just remember. Oh, bring on the haters! I love I love the hater. I am a hater. I'm one of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I'm king hater. If you can get past the uh, the naturalistic fallacy and the, you know the principle of toxicology that the dose makes the toxin, then you know, uh, prove me wrong. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Want to see some comments? What's up next, Hal? What are we doing now? Let's go with some game picks, shall we? Game uh, picks. Straight go. into it. Nice this sweet. is last week's? Sweet. This is last week. So this is going to be the last episode we have this year. So we're going to pick back oh, up uh, in the can't first we pump episode my, next year. Can't we pump out a couple more episodes? Oh, we'll see. But um, we now, may There may be some bonus Christmas ep- episodes. Christmas. Exactly. But for now, we're not going to pick any games between now and the next episode. We're wrapping up the last week. So um, Game picks. Go. Who won? Let's go. State of Origin game three you both bit queensland you both won well uh, thanks to cameron munster yeah mm-hmm. you have shout out to him Masashi shout athlete. out to masashi athlete cam munster uh in ufc we had valentina shevchenko versus jennifer mayer well that was an easy that was a, whoever got that wrong was should yeah. shoot themselves you both got shevchenko correct yeah. well done uh tottenham versus mad city on the same day uh Duren wins with tottenham tottenham mm-hmm. yep T- and tottenham uh, yes <laughs> Tottenham. And then in, in the cricket on Thursday, 27th, we had Australia versus India. Ross winning with Australia. Mm. The Indian cricket team mm-hmm. using Masashi products while yeah. they're out here. They just asked us for some. so They have. You know, they knew where to come for the best, yeah. the best really stuff. Cool. Yeah. So we're expecting their performances to, um, if you start them, see them start to beat Australia. This is a good case study. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can dr- but if they get worse, it's not because of us. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> and uh, final one was Rafael Nadal versus Dominic Theme. You both took Nadal and you both lost. Oh, uh, what? One, oh, more, theme one. one more. So the result is a draw between you two. Oh, draw. So you know what happens in the result of a draw, don't oh, you, Hal? I do. Who's going to have the spoon? It's my turn. It's Hal's turn today. Well, how much, how much triple is he feeding me? Well, you are going through puberty, so we want to give that a little bit of a kick on. Oh, wow. So we're actually... You've been nice. We've been nice to each other. We're giving each other shred, matrix, and deluxe protein, things that actually do taste good. Oh. We were going to start the hot sauce this week, but, you know. Yeah. Um, hot sauce can wait till after Christmas, I think. Yeah. We've um, I've emptied some tribulus capsules. How many caps am I dropping? Am I triple dropping? <laughs> um, you're, you're dropping enough here. Yeah. So I've opened up some, some capsules. These are designed oh, to be yeah. swallowed yeah. in the capsule form. Yeah. For a yeah. specific reason, you know. Things are in capsules because... Here you go, Sometimes how? you don't looks, want to taste looks foul. what's inside the capsule. Do you not drop that all over your computer? Oh my god. Bottoms up. Enjoy. That should have been on camera. <laughs> oh. But oh all we saw was a puff of smoke. And Hal just disappeared. It was like a man- magician, you know, he d- dumps that smoke and just yeah. disappears. I thought he was going to spew. Oh, stuck in my teeth. Really How gross. good was that? Oh, man. It was really unpleasant. I think yeah. that's the worst one yet. And yeah. we didn't even capture it on camera. It looks like he just licked a battery or Straight something. Straight on to sports news. What do we got, Hal? Oh, <laughs> oh Diego oh. Maradona. We're going to oh. play, um, play a funny video because, uh, unfortunately, Diego Maradona has passed away at the age of 60. The greatest of all time. He lived a hard life. Yeah. And, you know, I saw some articles come off this week criticizing him. Man, he's what he did on the pitch. What are we watching here, Darren? Can you pass me the shred matrix? Um, No way. Please. This is is just uh, one of his one of his warm ups, you know, just I think this this kind of shows what kind of guy he was. It's all about all about the rhythm. You know, he wasn't worried about. About the the things normal people worry about, you know, he is. So for the younger guys, Maradona, right? He is what the messy of today. Um, um, I I don't think Messi's quite on his level yet. You know, he took he took Napoli, you know, uh, an average Italian team to win the UEFA Cup, unheard of. You know, he was he was the best player in the world by a country mile when he was when he was around. Look at him! Look at the legs on him. Yeah, little nugget. He's got bigger legs than than Hal. Yeah. He's about thirty. In Why are his shoelaces undone? You know, because he's just playing around. Look at that! Oh, he's doing all these tricks just before a game it's without e- without even tying his shoelaces. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And um, you know he, he he did live a hard life. Uh, that was was that post his career or during during right yeah 
uh, you know, there, there was some controversies about drugs and things, but... Uh, some controversy <laughs> al- allegations. You know, I, I have an opinion that, you know, some of these great athletes actually, you know, turn to some of these things like John Jones and, you know, it's part of the, their relationship with these vices that make them so great, you know? They're, they're reckless. They're, there's some sort of recklessness to them. Exactly. And if you watch how he plays, it's boldness and, you know... Really? Really dominating... Uh, and confidence. It's overcom- almost an overconfidence. Well, they sponsored by Mars there. Yeah. Well, it must be. He looks like he's high on sugar at the moment or something uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Something natural like sugar. Yeah. He's enjoying that music for yeah. sure. Oh, look at him. <laughs> this, is, this looks very reminiscent of your warm up before you squat, Darren. Mm. It, look at it. That th- I do that same thing. Look at him. He claps <laughs> as well. Look. Yeah. This is Darren <laughs> prior to squatting. Nobody warms up like that. this anymore. Nobody's got the confidence. The, he's the show, you know? The whole stadium's just watching her. They would be. Yeah. Wait, imagine how much time just doing this alone at home yeah. To, yeah. to get this down. And he's just doing it easy. He's playing. Yeah, I watched so the documentary casual. on him. You know, same, same director as like the Amy Winehouse documentary. And, you know, it talks about his, his rise from, you know, the slums of Argentina. He came from literally from nothing. And, you know, he became one of the best. He died age 60. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too young. Short innings, but... You know. But uh, bold innings. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's a nice one. Um, also in the news, we yes. have <coughs> uh, a cast of NBA stars have begun investing in uh, to NBL teams. What's with so this? We're getting an influx of NBA players mm-hmm. investing and buying into NBL teams. Mm. Yeah. That's so good for um, the NBL. I Maybe, agree. You know, they're probably, probably seeing the quality down here and know what's coming. You know, Australia could be... You know, one of the one of the powerhouses in in basketball in the world in the That'd future. Be great to see. Yeah, well, I think like the last NBA season, we were just looking up. There was fifteen Australian players in playing in the NBA. Wow, and you know, and you hear of the big guys, but um, there's probably a whole heap of. Uh, well, obviously, there is. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the NBA is in a league of its own. Excuse the the pun, but uh, you know, there's there's nothing to really rival it. Like you know, you look at other sports like football or soccer, for example. You know, each plenty of countries have strong leagues, but you know. So who's bought into this? So so John Wall, who's you know was the number one draft pick a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, still you know very very highly rated and highly paid yeah. <laughs> the player, most overpaid athlete. Oh in really? America. He's got a lot of money to splash, so you know he's he's just taken part ownership of one of the teams which we sponsor, the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. Oh, hey, yeah. shout out to the Southeast yeah. Melbourne Phoenix. You've got Creaky's jersey right behind you as well. I do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So he joins um. Uh, Dante Exum, Zach Randolph, Al Harrington, and Josh Childress as part owners of the South End Melbourne Phoenix. Um, recently, other people who, or other NBA stars who have invested in NBA, uh, NBL teams include uh, Kevin Martin, uh, who's a partial owner of the Brisbane Bullets, and Andrew Bogart, who's a partial owner of the Sydney Kings, whom he played a season or two for. Yeah, and that's good news for the NBL. I think the more more that happens, the better. And they, I think a lot of these players are recognising the talent and the potential in the NBL. Yeah, great. Another recent uh, star to invest is uh, Victor Oladipo, a big favourite of mine, yeah. investing in the New Zealand Breakers. Nice. Mm-hmm. That NBL season kicks off, I think, in the new year. They've had to put it back due to COVID, but yeah, looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also in the news, we have, we don't have a, a visual, unfortunately, but Shana Jack, I uh, have some news on her ban from... Uh, Ben got halved. Yeah, so yeah. she tested positive for Ligandrol, also known as LGD four zero three three. You know, one of the one of the popular psalms at the moment. You know, mm-hmm. um, a very popular um, steroid, let's call it, and you know, definitely banned by the anti doping agency. So she kind of gave a few reasons how she may have uh, this may have entered her body. You know, one what? of the reasons was her partner may have been using it and shared the same you know neutral bullet or whatever. So what her partner was using Ligandrol. Yeah, and she just didn't even know. Up yeah. until now. Well, you know, it's... it's so, and he, he's just kept it quiet. Oh, honey, I don't know how you've tested positive for Logandrol. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, oh, I might have been using it and it might have been in one of my shakers. Yeah. Bullshit. Yep. Next. Supplements, you know, favorite of all these athletes, blame your supplements. You know, if you're using Masashi, you're using Informal Sports certified products, but uh, it could have been her supplements. Well, that that has some legs because we've we've seen... that. Sup- we've tested supplements that contain banned substances before, not ours, obviously, but... Yep. It's going to be a less accepted excuse now yep. that, you know, they are... But like in- Gantrol, very expensive to put in a supplement. Very, so... So you're increasing the cost of your supplement without actually being able to claim that that product is in there. Hmm. You're probably making it more effective. Yeah, and I guess, you know, the third... 
Okay, I write that second one off as no. bullshit as well. Third excuse, there may have been some Lagendrol in the swimming pool and she may have congest- ingested some water from the swimming pool, you know, a drop in the ocean in that one. But <laughs> Well, there was, there was actually a recent podcast I was listening to about one drop of seawater mm. contains one million different viruses. Wow. Yep. So out of the three... That's probably the most likely. Yeah, but you'd think, oh, that's... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. So they're the three excuses. Yeah, so... Well, keep working on some more. But, but obviously yeah, I, she's had it reduced yeah. because it was, hasn't taken it knowingly, been able to prove that. Well, they've been able to raise enough question marks to reduce the band by half. Okay, next yeah. topic. I think everyone knows where I stand on that one. Dieran's <laughs> a little bit more diplomatic and, yeah, uh, you know, and nicer than me. S- most of the time innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, have, yeah, I'm the other way. We do have a visual here. We are recapping Jake Paul versus Nate. Well, Wilson. we should probably recap by saying this was the undercard fight mm-hmm. to Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Mm-hmm. Which ended uh, in a draw. Which ended in a draw because it was an exhibition bout. Yeah. But Tyson won. But Tyson won. But it was good. To, it was good to see the obviously old guys, not as um, physically. I'm, I'm, active. I'm a big fan of Roy Jones Jr. And you know uh, he gassed hard. Yeah, he he didn't have the the legs in him that he he once did. I rewatched. I watched the fight yesterday live, and then I rewatched it again this morning. Tyson hits him with some solid body shots. Mm. So it doesn't matter how fit you are. Mike Tyson is ripping. Um, some punches this, into the body. You, know, you are going to gas. Yeah. The last thing to go is your power. So. Mm. Well, according to Rocky Five, anyway. So. Tyson looked all right. <laughs> they both yeah. looked all right. I think some some of the videos of Mike Tyson recently just surfacing on the internet. He looks dangerous. He's like a robot spinning around like that. Oh yeah, he's yeah, he, yeah he's still got the tech there. That's been ground into him since he was a kid. But mm. yeah, yeah, Jake Paul, who is a bit of a YouTuber, he uh, my kids are into him actually. They watch mm. his vlogs and. YouTube videos versus uh, Nate Robinson, ex NBA player. I love Nate Robinson. It was yeah. really hard to watch this. But yeah, so um, Nate Robinson doing. Th- we'll, we'll we'll have a look at. Um, Apparently, he had a session with Floyd Mayweather as well, but uh, none so of that Floyd Mayweather defense on show right there. <laughs> so he's never had a professional fight. Jake's had a couple. He's um, a, he's an athlete, definitely. You know, Nate Robinson's got the. They're both athletes. The speed and the power of you know a world class athlete. But yeah. does and he have the b- boxing skills? There's another. There's so there's another the story. first knockdown. He's Jake Paul was actually, I would classify him as an elite level athlete as well. Did a lot of um, wrestling in college. Him and his brother, known for goofing off on YouTube videos, but but um, actually quite athletic guys. Yeah. Um, with, a, with a long history in combat sports, mainly through wrestling. So we're watching some footage now. For, you, for those listening, it's sort of Jake and, and Nate. Nate's already been... Um, Dropped once, yeah, and um, but uh, Jake sort of dominated dominated this fight. Anyone that watched it was quite entertaining, but the very the, much one sided. <laughs> the actual knockout at the end, um, which we'll see shortly, was brutal. Yeah, absolutely brutal. Um, and for for guys in their sort of first and second fights, I think the ref should have stopped it on probably knockdown number two. Yeah. Um, the first knockdown, I, I didn't think he'd get up from, and he actually did well. He, he must be a really tough guy. Yeah, he is like, super tough. Yeah, and played in the NBA. and you'll see from the second the second knockdown, right? You, I, I think he's gone there and yeah. for some reason. I thought th- I thought they were going to stop the fight, you know, and they probably should have stopped it. But oh yeah, given his you know limited experience, but yeah, very limited experience. Uh, you can see, boom. there's the second one. Yeah, big uh, overhand right gets him right behind the ear, drops him. He's face down on the mat. Yeah, I've seen I've seen plenty of memes already. You know, he's up he's up to eight count before he even starts to get up. Yeah, for me that's done. If this is your first professional fight and you've been knocked down twice, yeah, he's tough. brutally, he's so he, he didn't tough. want to give up though. You know, no. And look, the yeah, the whole hats off to him. Yeah, high level. Look, Jake just smells blood now. Boom, yeah. there yeah. it is. Drops yeah. him. Plenty of him. plenty of memes coming out of that one. Yeah. And the whole basketball community. Which that's what we live in the, the meme society these days, but that, that sucks. Like yeah. high level NBA player putting it, putting his reputation on the line, stepping mm. in for a fight. He's not a fighter. Yeah. He's a basketball player. Mm. He didn't have to do that. Hats off to him for even getting in there. And against a, a bigger, younger opponent as well. Yeah. Anyway, it was interesting to see. Yeah, I guess you know we're still waiting on LeBron James versus Colby Covington, but <laughs> I think I think we see now how He's what would different. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that was a 
an NBA player versus yeah. a YouTuber. Yeah. Imagine an NBA player versus a professional champion fighter. He's built different. Yeah. yeah. See. LeBron. <laughs> I would like to see those LeBron memes. Actually. <laughs> last, last bit of news. Uh, <laughs> a text between Mark Hunt and Paul Gallen. I thought this was pretty, pretty funny. <laughs> I saw this pop up. So Mark Hunt, who is a, a former MMA and K1 kickboxing champion, um, had so many professional fights um, and has fought steroid cheaters in the past, guys like Brock Lesnar, and yep. has actually got a current lawsuit against the UFC for fighting um, guys that have been using, known using steroids. Mm. He's actually text, texted Paul Gallant, former NRL legend, um, before their upcoming fight, are you using steroids? <laughs> um, so I think he's um, obviously wants to make sure it's a, it's a clean fight, mm. but um, it was interesting to see. There's so much talk about steroid use these days. What's your, what's your prediction for this fight? You know, we just saw an NBA player versus a fighter. I'm pretty sure we're going to see an NRL fight player versus a, a fighter and what's going to happen is going to be pretty similar in oh, my look, opinion. If, you, if you go skill for skill it's Mark Hunt all day long um, but older. Paul Gallant is a gritty tough dude with a gas tank on him yeah. mm. if one thing Mark hasn't been known for it's his gas tank um, but he's an amazing fighter Yeah, but it's a fight anything can happen my prediction is Mark Hunt yeah I've, I've always been New South Wales and Paul Gallon's always the cat or used to be the captain, but I still fucking hate him. Oh, <laughs> why? He's a pig. No, yeah. he's, hey, you don't know he's, him, so you can't pass I think judgment. He, I think he's a nice guy. He's just unlikable. Mate, <laughs> and, and, and people that form opinions on guys just because they how, how they play on the field yeah. and what how they're seen in the public. That's me. The guy's a legend. He, he's, he's a legend of the NRL and... and Many players love him and respect him. You you don't you don't captain your state for being a pig, mm. like the guy's a legend and he dedicated himself to a sport for a half of his life. So yeah. all credit to him. We don't know him, so good luck to mm. both boys there. Fair enough. Yeah, that is it for uh, sports news. What's up next? Get it up. Uh, what's up next? We have some listener questions. Let me just get that screen back. Oops. Um. Listener questions. What do we got? We got some Sorry. decent questions this week. I'm hoping. I believe we do. Uh, first one. Georgia Ritchie asks. Georgia, hi Georgia. Hi Georgia. When is carb loading a good idea? Carb loading a good idea. I'm not the biggest fan of carb loading. I just think continue to eat the normal amounts of carbs that you would normally eat mm -hmm. because I've seen carb loading go wrong way too many times. And carb loading can cause digestional upset. Mm. It can actually uh, increase weight, which is not great for before an event, a game, a mm. training session. Um, it can make you leave you feeling sluggish. It can make your digestive system work overtime. Um, so I'm all for whatever carbs you have been eating leading up mm. into your training for that event. Mm. Continue down that same path of, of nutrition. Yeah, and, you know, we've got a, a game day nutrition episode where we kind of break this out a bit more. But, yeah, I agree, you know, uh, don't mix it up too much. But one time I think might be a good way to experiment with carb loading is, you know, when you train light and you, you perform heavy. So, you know, if you – I've I played with this myself, you know, um, you do low carb a little bit and then you introduce some carbs after a couple of weeks. It's like almost like an extra energy boost that you, you were missing. So Yeah, introduce it slowly and test it. Yeah. Um, leading up to, I wouldn't never it, test in in a, in a big event. And the the biggest I see this all the time in the endurance world. It's like before triathlete, they're all out there the night before loading up on their bowls of pa the bowls of pasta and rice. It's like you got no idea about nutrition. <laughs> and you see them like halfway through the event, chowing down on like white bread, veggie white sandwich and sandwiches and mm. jelly beans. And I was like, oh my god! If if there's one sporting field. Or one group of people that know the littlest about nutrition, mm. it's endurance athletes. Yeah, I'm sure at a high level, well, but at I a know, local I, community, a broad, broad term, but well, yeah. where, uh, what other sporting group would know less about nutrition? Um, Those guys do every not everything wrong, but the majority wrong. I guess so. Maybe sumo wrestlers. Would be it's all about simple carbohydrates. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's nothing in there about recovery, and it's it's crazy what they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, and it comes from old old science that probably one guy was doing at the top level so and they 
they all have to wear the the leader's jersey yeah. and copy what the top guy's doing. Fair and enough. we just lost every single endurance athlete. Mm-hmm. It's not all of you. Yeah. So, Georgia, to summarize, carb loading, uh, if you're going to, I guess, Ex- experiment them. with it, but don't rely on it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, second one is from Ted Conahan, who asks, Teddy. what are the best exercises to start with in the gym? So I'm not particularly sure if he means start with in terms of when you first start working out mm-hmm. or maybe what exercises do you start with in any set if you're doing an hour-long workout. <sighs> and I think I can guess what you, you might say. Let's answer both. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think the answer for both is compound exercises like squat, squats and deadlifts, you know? Mm-hmm. Although, you know, it's very intimidating to start off with that when you first started training. It's the best thing to learn, you know? It's the best movements to learn, the best the best carryover to almost any sport. So uh, I would definitely start with, yep. you know, multi-joint exercises, yep. squats, deadlifts. So squats, if it, for deadlifts. chest, that would be bench. For back, that would be just rows. When you're talking chest and back, you're talking about isolated exercises, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, squats, bench, and deadlift will b- build all three in a, in a multi-joint way. Excellent. Well, the good answer. Uh, that's all what, from What me. about Ross? That covered okay. my answer as well. Oh, okay, cool. I, I thought so. I would agree. Um, that's all for me. We have, oh, we have a famous athlete quote before the Masashi quote. Go for it. Oh, I like this one. This is funny. Uh, man says, my career was sputtering until I did a 360 degree turn and got headed in the right direction. Oh, I've heard this. You know, 360, obviously you're facing the same way. <laughs> uh, oh, um, Javal McGee. Nah. Oh. I've got no idea. Right sport. Right sport. Do you want a hint? Yeah. Uh, he was OG for the Raptors. Vince Carter. No. Another basketballer. Yeah. You can see what sport Hal likes. Yeah. I, th- I think it's pretty even between basketball and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 20 basket. Yep. Um, DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry. Mate, come on. you meant to be a Raptors fan. <laughs> what? <I said. laughs> T-Mac. Oh, Tracy T-Mac. Oh, man. Never heard of him. What? You Never know, heard of this guy. I'm going to show you T Max uh, th- 13 points in 13, oh, 33 the seconds. The best player in the early 2000s. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Vince Probably Carter's the period cousin. of time that I didn't follow basketball. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, that's all for me. Let's have T-Mac. a Masashi quote. Tracy McGrady. <laughs> Tracy McGrady. <laughs> okay. Um, My mouth still okay. tastes awful, by the way. Miyamoto Masashi quote of the day. It's actually taken from The Way of Walking Alone. These are three of his ways of walking alone way of walking alone in all things have no preferences be indifferent to where you live do not pursue the taste of good food oh, Appropri- i always pursue the taste of good food well appropriate quote you know uh, <laughs> oh here we of course it is <laughs> talking about taking it in a very <laughs> literal way t- talking about <laughs> sugars and sweeteners you know um do not pursue the taste of good food you know uh, eat food for its nutrition and it's uh you know, it's benefits to your health and your well-being rather than, you know, just go smashing down some sodas. Um, just don't chase the sweetness. Good. Yeah, don't, don't chase the, the Coca-Cola sweetness. Just taste the, <laughs> chase, chase, chase the hydration from the water inside. The white dragon. I'm yeah. expecting a lawsuit on Diren again from Coca-Cola for this episode. Yeah. And several of the AIDS. Mm, it's yeah. all allegedly. The sugar industry is coming for us. Oh, they'll be coming for you. Yeah, uh, I'm going to wake up. They're definitely going to kill me in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to wake up with a dead half of a mango in your bed. <laughs> well, thanks to Miyamoto Masashi. Thanks to Jiren for all that information. Check us out on YouTube if you want to watch any of the clips. If you're just listening, write in some reviews. Interested to see what people think. Thanks again, Hal. If we don't see everyone before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Have an awesome time. Be safe over the holidays. Don't drink too much alcohol, Hal. Don't eat to do. too much sweet. <laughs> Don't eat too much sweetness <laughs> and keep your training going. And anything else you guys want to add? No, that's it. Sweet as, bro. Sweet as. Merry Christmas. Don't be salty. <laughs> Out. Gotcha.